Hey everybody, this is Big Games, Small Pieces, and boy do I have something for you. This is going to be my third in the retelling campaigns, The Curse of Strahd. Ravenloft, as it was formerly known, is a classic module from AD&D, republished in every Dungeons & Dragons edition, and even got its own campaign setting. It's a gothic horror story based on classic vampire monster movies. I'm going to be doing a retelling for the first time I ran this amazing campaign. Now, every DM is going to run their games a little different. And with the sandbox nature of this module, no group will do the same game. Add the fortune telling mechanic and the randomness of players, and you can say that this will not be like your game. That being said, there are still so many spoilers in this retelling that if you were to listen to it, it would take away from your first time playing the game. So, if you are a player or are going to be a player, coming up that you can see, as much as I'd love you to, don't watch this video or this series. It will spoil things and ruin things, and as I told my players, you only get one first time. Honestly, I mean, there's so much stuff out there on Curse of Strahd, you do one Google search on something and you could spoil the whole thing just by glancing at something. So, stay away from it if you think you're going to uh, be playing it. And I will say, try and get involved in this game. Now, before I do get into the introductions, I do have to take a little note of how I decided to run this game. And that being that uh, I didn't run it raw from the book. Um, I spent... A couple of months reading it over and over again, uh, and then rereading adventures, and then the countless hours on Reddit, and also watching many a thing on YouTube. And I do have to—I can't mention everyone. I'm not going to remember them all, nor am I remember where I got every bit of information. But I can remember the big ones that have inspired me on this one, which would be the two Reddit users, Mandy Mod and Drag Nakata. I will put links to their stuff below. So if you're doing the same, you can check it out. I dare say you'll find them everywhere. That also said. Uh, Puffin Forest's YouTube channel where he retells his Curse of Strahd campaign was absolutely fantastic and I did take one or two things but I also noticed he took one or two things from the others. Uh, also the YouTube channel Lunch Break Heroes as I realised the other morning why I was keenly viewing their latest release on their guides to Curse of Strahd. It's a growing thing that everyone's using all this sort of stuff together but recognition where I can place some. Now our adventurers for this campaign were all new to me. I simply put a post up on the local uh, group chat and got uh, some people to come and join us. And I started everyone at level one. We've got Tristan playing as Braces, a female tiefling warlock with a pack to the old one. We have uh, Ryan playing as Genji, a male gnome moon druid. We'll have Sven playing as Ymir, a male human monk. And now with the benefit of hindsight, Alan will be playing Dex for a short period of time, who was a male human rogue, before he is switched out coming up. Um, so some of the players come and go. Uh, not everyone's there every session, um, but generally we keep the game going, and I try and keep my players about anywhere between three and five people for uh, uh, this game to make it doable. Uh, so let's kick off with my retelling of... The Curse of Strahd. Our characters start off in Daggerford, a city some 100 miles southeast of Waterdeep, on the sword coast of Faerun. In the town square, a crier is making an announcement. Hear ye, hear ye, let it be known that a ferocious lion has had a bounty placed on its head. A lion has been attacking the good people of our shires to the south, and a bounty of 70 gold pieces has been placed upon the creature's head. Proof of demise will be necessary. Bring your proof to the keep, and reward will be issued. Now, a lot of people just simply take interest in that and continue about their business, but a few of their people hanging around for something to do and a bit of adventure all sort of catch each other's eyes and realise maybe this is something we should be doing together. A line is something that I don't want to tangle with. Braces, Genji and Ymir all decide that potentially having someone to watch their back will be a handy thing. As word has gotten out that a few people have already had the beast upon them 
and have injured themselves greatly to near death. So the group form up and head south. They travel down and hunt down the line. Using some jeweled craft and survival checks, they manage to capture and kill the beast. Once dead, they lug the body back for proof. While returning back to the city, through the farms, people come out from the fields, the houses, and are overjoyed to see that the lion has been killed. Women and children come out wanting to have a look at the lion and thank the people and have a look at the beast, see the thing that's been hunting them and causing them such heartache. Two maids come out and tell the story of a man who was slain last week by it. He was torn to pieces and lays in bed, unable to get out, torn up and greatly injured. But when word got around, as it quickly does, and he heard that someone had slayed the beast, he told the ladies who were taking care of him and meant looking after his bandages that he wanted his life savings given to them as tribute for what they've done, as thanks. The ladies hand the crew a couple of silver pieces and thank them, thank them heartily for what they've done. Our team continue into Daggerford and the same thing happens. Locals want to gather around, touch the line, children want to look at it, touch it and run off squealing. People want to shake their hands and congratulate them. This is something that they'll remember for weeks to come. As the town then moves into celebratory, the heroes find themselves in a tavern, drinking in a booth with a human that seems to have wedged himself into the group. He's wearing dark clothes and has been sitting with them for some time now and has introduced himself as Dax. He talks as if he's been with the group the whole time. Though not, they're not mentioning it and saying directly he has. He just kind of, his language implies that he's been with them for a while now and this is all, he's part of the team. Well, they sit drinking together when, in the evening, a man in very flamboyant clothing enters. He walks into the tavern and his clothes catch the eye of many a person. Dressed like a very flamboyant gypsy, he spies the table with our heroes upon it and wanders over. He says, My friends, uh, I have been sent to deliver a message to you. If you are uh, creatures of honour, you will come to my master's aid at first light. Take the road east from here and travel for some time until you have reached Barovia. There, my master will meet you. He pulls from his person a note, sealed, and leaves it with them. I pray you will join us in this most noble of quests. And as quickly as he came in, he wanders up to the bar, grabs himself, buys himself, I should say, a couple of bottles of wine, and then declares to the tavern, Fill your glasses. Tonight you drink on my master. And throws some gold across the bar and walks off into the night. The team recoil from their drunkenness and uh, surprise of what's just happened. As <laughs> new adventurers are not used to these sort of things happening in taverns for them. The team read the note that was left from the fancily dressed gypsy. They read... Hail to thee of might and valour. I, a lowly servant of Barovia, send honour to thee. We plead for thy so desperately needed assistance. The love of my life, Irina Kaudiana, has been afflicted by an evil so deadly that even the good people of their village cannot protect her. She languishes from her wound, and I would have her saved from this menace. There is much wealth in this community. I offer it all that it may be had to thee and thy fellows, if thou shalt but answer my desperate plea. Come quickly, for her time is at hand. All that I have shall be thine. Goliana Indirovich, Burgomaster. Because the characters are in the mood to celebrate rather than worry about this recent turn of events, they decide to keep enjoying themselves for the evening. Genji spends his night dancing, drinking ale and creating flowers to dance around. 
Ymir heads off to meditate. The new human that's joined the group, Dax, says that he's going to scarp her off and see what he can find out about Barovia, and he'll meet them back here in the morning. And Bracey says she's going to sort the group out and eventually get to bed. And with that, we're going to leave it for the next session. Hope you enjoyed this. Stay tuned. We're going to continue this story, and this is an epic tale to be told.